what's going on guys i wanted to let you guys know i stream on twitch and i also help players level up farm i'm building a dope community to help players level up farm you can watch me live at twitch.tv i'll see you guys there i just want to let you guys know please be safe and careful you're missing some dope content this what am i even doing This is not a good area for me. Dude! Oh, did you see that? He hit me on one side and he landed on me and it I when I, whenever I fell, I went right over him onto the other side of him. Oh, since I saw that, it's hilarious. What's that? Donald's gonna be super good. It's not even at its it's not even at its peak yet, man. This is why I freaking love this. What the hell? What the fuck? What the fuck? <laughs> Come on, Dauntless! I was literally giving you <laughs> What the Well, I'll check you guys later. Please be So what's going on guys? It's your boy CJ Ball. Let me go ahead and let you know what this build consists of. This is the Bloodfire Axe. This is the attack speed build that I've been working on for quite some time. This build is fun. It's extremely fun. I just used it to take down Reza. It's awesome. You can farm Reza with it. You can actually farm materials with it. It works rather fast. It gives you all the benefits of a axe. It gives you all the benefits of an uh, you know attack speed. And it's just fun and a unique build. It's not the most viable build, but it's definitely a fun build to be playing with. And that's, that's you know, that's like half the game right there. If you're having fun, you're having like a time of your life. This is a very, very abstract build. So if you want to use it, you can use it to, it works very well with other players, but it works just, you know, it's pretty much just as well by yourself. It's very, very fun. Understand that it's a very niche build. It's a very squishy build, but it, it has a lot to offer. It's very, very fun. So basically what we do is we, we're utilizing the Bloodfire Axis passive. So the Axis passive is in four hits on quick succession, it gives you 250 bonus damage, okay? So it gives you 250 bonus damage. We're going to abuse that with the Lantern, with the Shriek Lantern. This Lantern is gonna give you 15% attack speed on the hold for 15 seconds. And 40%, the 40%, the 40% um, movement speed is going to be for your positioning. You're gonna need that for positioning, especially when you're fighting um, other things. So especially when you're fighting um, like Reza or Shroud, your positioning is very, very important. And getting in, you know, into safety and out of safety, or capitalizing a, on a at the right moment, you're going to use that for that. So for the cells, we're going to be using overpower. So whenever a behemoth is down, it only has plus two, but we just need to fill that spot, that slot. We don't have um we don't have um attack speed we don't have an axe that has an attack speed on the first one and a utility or something on the second one usually the attack speeds on the second one but it's for to use the to utilize this one you're just gonna have something in that slot so i decided to go with overpower because that overpower is going to give you um it'll give you more damage whenever you knock it down because you're using an axe the axe will give you that stagger the axe has a stagger in there so dishing out rather than hitting you know a thousand in stagger you're gonna probably be hitting 300 or 200 to 300 maybe even 400 on the stagger i mean on, on stagger on every hit which is gonna add up to that thousand so you're, you're getting a thousand over time rather than a thousand up front using the attack speed so you're trying to minimize that attack speed right then and there so you have the evasion evasion is gonna let you um dodge it increases the the window for dodging so then you know the invincibility frame the iframe you're going to use that a lot because you're gonna be up close you're going to have to dodge through whatever comes your way you're gonna to have to know the behemoth but dodging through it shouldn't be a problem because you're using an axe and if you're familiar with axes you're gonna be you're in the face all the time so you're gonna to have to dodge most of the time anyway that's pretty much how you mitigate damage you're a frontliner but with this one you're not really much of a frontliner you're more of 
I mean, you more you just pretty much damage and stagger. Your utility comes from the stagger, and your damage comes from attacking over and over and over again and proccing this weapon's passive. So, with the, with the lantern, the street lantern, the street lantern, we're going to have plus two etheric tunement. This is gonna give you lantern charge. It's gonna give you a percentage lantern charge. So we have plus two on there. We have the shock jaw jacket. Now we're not running. We're not running. I'm not. We're watching. We're having this the Zaga jacket. We're not running the shock jaw jacket because the shock jaw jacket gives us defense, and we really need the utility. We really need the utility to be dishing out as much damage with the attack speed. We want to proc this attack speed. I mean, we want to proc our lantern so that we can attack over and over again. This is gonna give us. This is the bulk of our attack speed. Especially when we're when half of our kit is down. So by that I'll explain later what I mean by half the kit's down. So next we have it also well it also gives you another attunement. So it gives you plus four right here with that three. With the thorn with the thorn helmet. This is very very this is the cold shy helmet. It's very very important because it gives us predator. Yeah, we're not gonna capitalize on predator. We're gonna capitalize on the fact that it lets us use the attack speed cell. It lets us give a base. It gives us a base of flurry. We get plus three evasive flurry. Okay, so with this, we're going to be dishing out the damage really, really fast. We're gonna stack this with our lantern. So being up close and dodging that iframe, that the little bit of extra iframe that we have, it's gonna to try to ensure us that we actually get that that roll through. So whenever we roll through that, or whenever we roll through it, gives us the give us this attack speed. We're gonna utilize that with our lantern and smack dish out as much damage attack really really fast proc our sword rock our axis passive so that's why we have that we have three on here in total we're gonna have six we have wild frenzy whenever our health is low whenever our health is low you want to dish out as much damage as possible as much damage if you stagger the behemoth and your health is low get every bit of damage you can this is a pretty much an all or nothing type of build so you're gonna dish out everything and then you're gonna to try to reset or back off as soon as possible with your instant cast on your lantern so that's what you're gonna to have to do now that wild frenzy couples with the with the two evasive flurry that we actually get from using the arm this is the blood fire arm so this is the blood fire gloves so it's very very it's a very very good throw the fire resistant you're not really worried about resistance because you're gonna be squishy anyway you're going to be squishy uh, um, you're gonna be squishy regardless so when you you're gonna have to dodge the dodge is pretty much the main source of your kit now remember when I told you that half of your when the half of your kit is down when you're at full health because we're gonna try to be at full health as much as possible but when you're at full health you don't have the wild frenzy cell so the wild frenzy cell is whenever you're back against the wall you're low health you have pots the pots are gonna balance you out with your health so you're going to attack whenever you're gonna attack when your health is low like attack like crazy when your health is low when your health is high you want to you want to constantly get some really solid hits in in between there you're safe now you're in a safe zone when you're in the red and your wild frenzy pops you want to dish it out and then whenever you have a safe position get back up get your health get some um, healing or if you want to go balls to the wall just attack all in you can definitely do that especially if you have your teammates this is why i said it works a lot well with teammates you can take a dive and dish out a bunch of damage play as safe as possible while you're dishing out a bunch of damage and then you'll be just in a great position to all right i have i don't know maybe 20 30 health i'm gonna dish out as much damage as i can play safe dish out as much damage and then all right if i get hit it's okay my homeboys will res me up but you do have to you you do have to understand that the timer the death the danger level understand that where the danger level is understand that if the danger level is at 40 you kind of don't want to do it unless you're going to be dishing out a bunch of it unless you're going to be getting you know getting the value out of it you have to balance that value thing. getting that value out of it but if you are at 20 and you're really getting it in you're really getting that damage in and you're low health and you're like i can i can play super safe get a ton of damage in it just don't care about the health at 20 you'll be doing awesome you'll be doing your team pretty much a favor just now as much as you can but remember you're still going to try to play safe 
And don't try to hinder your team by going balls to the wall all the time. Just understand when to go in and when to go out. So the last one, we're going to be using the boots. The boots give us a little bit of savagery for the part breaks. And we're gonna, these boots are the dead eye boots. Give us a little bit of savagery. We're not worried about the shock resistance, but it also gives us plus two wild frenzy. And then we get another plus two wild frenzy. That's gonna cap everything out right there. It's going to be really, really sweet for us to, you know, get the most out of it. We want to get a ton of damage through with this attack speed. Now, we can this is the overview right here. We have six evasive, we have six evasive flurry, which gives us 25% attack speed for six seconds. Awesome. We're gonna use that as much. Plus one predator. We're not worried about the predator, but to know, if you wanted to know, it gives us 4% damage whenever we have whenever we have a deal damage. So our etheric attunement is a hundred percent lantern charge. 100 percent So the thing about when I said we're gonna be abusing this lantern, we're literally going to be attack we're gonna crack our lantern. It's pretty much gonna be a passive. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna crack our lantern. All right, when the first gets charged, our attack speed's gonna fill that bar up again. And when that bar is filled, we're gonna crack that again, and then we're gonna constantly crack it, constantly crack it. Especially when we're getting into combat or we're already in combat and it falls off, we can put it right back on and keep it going. And then we'll be able to stack it in and it'll be ready for the next time, for the next free shots that we get, or for the next um, available chance that we have to deal more damage. This is all about getting what you can in, right? Like it's, you have to seize the moment. You have to dish out as much as you can while you're there, while you're in combat. And then as soon as it's safe to pull out, you pull out, reset, go back in, go ham. This is for the people who are hungry, who really wanna like nail in as much as they can with something super weird as an attack speed act build. This is, I, when I tell you this is very, very fun. I've worked on this for the past week it is amazingly fun and that lantern charge will always be there for you it will always be there for you not a doubt in my mind but you're still gonna have to play safe so our savages plus two gives you 30 percent damage versus wounded parts that's okay if someone pairs it up with if you're paired up with a with a war pike that's just a super super solid build that's a super solid um teammate for you you're gonna be dishing out as much as you can with that now with the with the um so when the shell shock you're not gonna really utilize that much but it gives you a little bit of resistance on the explosive damage wild frenzy when our, when our health is at 50 percent when our health is at 50 percent now if your health is at 50 percent you're going to and it's you know it's right there 50 percent is the most that you can get that's the, this is the middle ground 50 percent you're gonna dish out this damage very very safely all right you're gonna try to use your bull rod pots to safen it out if you want to be aggressive you can definitely add the attacks the attack damage um pots you can definitely add the attack speed pots i often carry the attack speed pots on there as one of mine but i like to either have two defensive two defenses um two defensive pots on the side or i'll take four pots what i think are super super effective they're really really solid and very very reliable might i add so we have plus three evasion the plus three evasion gives you an x so this gives you expands it by 25 percent expands your iframe by uh, 25 for 21 percent that's gonna be huge that's gonna be huge that's gonna help you get that little extra that that's gonna help make you safe just a little bit more just a little bit more safety and that's that's the thing well we're just now everything we're gonna be using as much we're gonna try to use as much caution as possible but still get what we can out of the out of our damage damage stay safe stay safe out there so our unique effect on the fourth hit and on the fourth hit in quick succession is 250 bonus damage that's what we're going to be banking on we're going to try to proc that as much as possible proc that as much as possible so we're going to have plus two overpower plus two overpower it's only 15 percent damage on over a staggered behemoth but you stagger you're using an axe you're going to stagger it you're going to stagger it at some almost at some point if you can get it to be dazed you're gonna stagger it you get this bonus damage for doing it it's a little plus it's a little plus on having this on the axe if you can have if you have a plus three cell you can throw a plus three stagger cell i currently do not have a plus three overpower cell but definitely 
put that plus that overpower right here because you're gonna be dishing out that damage a lot you can put knockout king it's you can this this in particular so you can make it a wider range of things you want utility you can put that knockout king right there if you want the if you want more damage you can put overpower if you want to i mean if you want to um utilize the fact that you're low health you can put rage that this is this is one cell that you can get whatever you want out of it you can interchange that out depending on let's say if your team really needs a stagger you can put that that um you can put that knockout king right so it's really really solid for that and then to couple with the it's a couple with the package on the side you can have your attack speed pots on your slot you can have attack speed pot attack speed pots i actually ran out of it i've been playing this build a lot and i love it your attack speed pot, <laughs> attack speed pots will give you so much damage. It couple it with it. You will, this the animation for the axe whenever it's going pretty fast is amazing. So I like to couple it with bull rock pots because later in the game, you later in the game, you're pretty much used to dodging and front your iframe. You're pretty much used to that. So having three of these will will net you out some really really great, uh, really really great saves. It will. It helps you a lot 25 percent damage reduction is huge you're used to not being hit in late game usually so whenever you are hitting whatever you are um trying to survive longer this can help you those extra hits can save you in the long run now i also like to couple with with iron hide with the iron hide podium or a pylon because it's also more defense we're, we're very squishy so this kind of kind of mitigates that a little bit Especially if you're fighting Reza, whenever Reza does the beam and you dodge into it, you can stack. You can put this podium right there. Once it drops, you can dish out damage. Or if it drops and it messes you over, you can actually. I mean, it hurts you. It'll reduce that damage. Staying alive and staying cautious with this build is very, very important. But if you don't really need, if you don't really need the the, the damage reduction, I would say keep the Borok pot. Put another damage. Put another damage oriented um. A damage damage oriented pot right here something that will help you either sustain something that'll help you dish out more damage or even or, or even support your team that last one's a freebie but i do recommend having both defense on the last one and then keep the attack speed right here and you'll be fine so thank you guys so much for jamming out this is my attack speed axe build i definitely love it i'll check you guys next time in the next build We're gonna ult the. There we go. What we want to do is we want to ult the 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 glass or his prism, because that prism actually gives you. That prism actually gives you um your your ult passy. As a passy. Oh no! Why did they say passy? Oh no! All right. Gotta play even cost more cautious now. Ugh. Ugh. Uh. The damage right there. Oh, we gotta we're gonna crack another bull rock. You really want to utilize that time when he's not really doing much. that this gives us defense while we're in this area we want to utilize that as much as possible yeah i assume he's gonna do it twice do i'm back well beans that's round one that's round one uh, I'm gonna pack up. You don't really want to worry about your passive too much, your your old passive, passive, because it, it's gonna keep you still. You want when you're running this, when you're running attack speed build, you want to deal as much damage as possible, and then whenever you have a free shot, you have a free shot. It's your ultimate. Gar try to guarantee yourself those ultis. Try to guarantee those because you're going to need that passive damage. We need that passive damage. But if it's risky, because the build is very very squishy, 
You do not want to put yourself in a bad position. That's the most thing. This you need to be pretty much a perfectionist. You need to know, all right, I have to hit this ulti or whatnot. Or my ultimate's about to go down. I want to charge. But your attack speed does let you charge faster. So it does open some windows for you that you otherwise wouldn't normally have. Like right here. Alright. I know I'm gonna get some free hits right here. I'm gonna try to disarm as much as I can. Get my ult passive. Get my ult passive. Come in. Ult right here. Bam! Smack him in the head. I have my ulti. It gives me some stagger. Cool beans. Knock them over it. Gotta get that other stagger. This is where your bread and butter really comes in. This is where you're gonna everything. This is where everything just starts to add up for you. You need everything you need right there. Alright. You can also back away, try to reset a little bit. You do not want to be in there. And that's going down. It's like a little bit a little bit trickier for you to, to dodge through. Cool beans. I want to drink the spot. Dodge right there. Dodge right there. Through. So as much damage as possible. Try to anticipate those rolls as best as you can. As best as you can. Oh, he set up for the full ulti. Get ready for that drop. I call that that is ultimate because he throws almost everything at you. Watch out for that tail. That tail's like very, very annoying. Oh, he gets much as I can. Pull out, real bad. I'm not too worried about getting. I'm not too worried about actually like hitting them right now. I want to be able to reset, recover, and get myself, you know, into a good position. This is a good place to fight him at. Damage is reduced here. If you can walk through it safely, walk through it. Look at this damn. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Go through it. Uh, we don't have any more Borogs or anything. We're actually trying to play as safe as possible. Pass is gone. It's okay. They actually stunned him quite heavily. There we go. I'm like, definitely not over there. There you go, boys. And that is how you take down Reza. With the attack speed build, dude. There you go. There you go. That is it, dude. That 